The Department of Health is embarking on an intensive information gathering undertaking and this following the recent detection of a highly transmissible variant of COVID-19 nicknamed the Kraken. Now it is nicknamed so uh, by some of its ability to spread uh, but officials say that uh, this is so far um, not been you know uh, they have not seen rather any significant differences in severity identified between cases caused by the XBB.1.5 uh, uh, and uh, those are from other variants uh, that have been compared uh, doesn't seem to uh, give us much at this point but the new variant is yet to be identified in China which is of course currently undergoing a surge in infections and it is however according to the World Health Organization the dominant strain in the United States and has been detected in at least 28 other countries so to help us make sense of these developments. We joined uh, via Zoom by CEO of Higher Health SA and global health expert, Professor Ramnik Aluwalia. Professor Aluwalia, thanks so much for being with us early in the new year. A happy one to you. Good morning to everyone. Good morning to you. And I hope this year is successful and it brings happiness and health to uh, everyone. Uh, Prof, let's just start with the name <clears throat> of this new variant. How do we pronounce it? It's called Kraken. K-R-A. K E N, and uh, it's a sub variant of Omicron, so it's not a new variant. So I think that's where the calmness comes from. From this, uh, you know, Sakina, over one billion people have been infected um, as per to the data uh, with this uh, variant called Omicron. If you remember, in the late 2021, early 2022, we experienced uh, a dominant variant that moved out of the old previous variants like the alphas, the betas, the delta wave, if you remember, then came an, a variant called Omicron. And the good thing for the world is, since one year uh, for Omicron circulation freely among humans in different parts of the world, causing various waves, it even caused two waves to South Africa, as much as they were mild and, and they were there during 2022, um, it is, it is not allowed another variant to be developed, which means the virus is mutating, but it's mutating within the Omicron family in itself. So the current Kraken subvariant is also a subvariant of the same family of Omicron that caused us probably our fourth wave, which was quite a, a major wave. Uh, and that is a good news. Uh, and it's a good information because uh, the variant is what we are not hoping for this virus to not develop. And what we're hoping is the Omicron remains the dominant variant, which is currently it is, and it's mutating. The virus will keep mutating. Kraken is a very highly transmissible virus. <clears throat> there are about 5,000 sub-variants of Omicron in circulation as per to the genomic sequencing in across the globe that we know. There are many we don't know because they are insignificant. But Kraken, among all of them, seems to be very highly transmissible. It has, why it's highly transmissible? Because it's mutated itself. It's developed some kind of mutations that it can escape our immune system very quickly. So when it comes into our human body, our human body does not recognize it for a while, gives the time to virus to bind to our human cells well, eat from our human cells, multiply faster. And that is the reason why the world shows a bit of a concern which means reinfections are highly possible, but the cases remains very mild, so no panic. And I think that's where the story for, for this new Kraken subvariant is at this moment. And, and I think uh, that last point is what people are perhaps more concerned about, uh, Professor Aluwalia, uh, whether people should generally be more concerned, whether they should be uh, taking more precautionary measures. You know, um, what do we know and what, if anything, should we be worried uh, worried about at this point? So, so definitely, uh, Sakina, COVID has not yet moved out of pandemic stage. It's still a pandemic. Uh, it's not even become an endemic at this moment, which means um, the virus is 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 very much around the human beings. It's spreading very freely among one human to the other. The virus is showing affinity uh, to live in human bodies. It's it's it's. It, it wants to survive in human bodies. Uh, and, and that is what is happening at this moment with COVID-19. 
But the important part is it's no longer novel uh, like the way it was in 2020. Um, as science knows about it, uh, there's a lot of immunity against this virus. Um, we presume 80% of our South Africans are already um, somewhere has developed immunity against Omicron in itself, as well as COVID-19 in general. Uh, which means there is immune system already ready in our human system that will be able to resist or fight uh, any new sub variants of omicron entering into our human body uh, plus we have vaccine immunity which has further boosted or built our immune system so south africans for me should not panic uh, at this moment um, the yes there are high chances of reinfections, maybe very mild reinfections, because the virus can enter the human body, the virus will bind to the human cells, the virus will show some symptoms, and the, the human body will show symptoms to this virus, but the body should have the immune system to overcome. Again, the vulnerability remains to the high-risk people, the old age people whose immune system, despite having vaccination, despite having uh, uh, acquired immunity, which is pre-infections, still remains vulnerable due to their body being less, being more vulnerable as, as with age, your immune system drops down. Or if you have chronic diseases, predominantly why? Because again, it lowers your body's ability to fight infections or immune system. So I think people who have compromised immune system needs to be again careful because reinfection is not as if there's no infection, which means you should not be allowing the, the reinfection to um, to grow to a level that it causes you to, to the pneumonia stage or lung stage or breathlessness stage. If it remains at the upper respiratory level to the running nose, sore throat, it is more controllable. Science now knows, medical science knows how to deal with COVID-19. So reporting COVID-19, testing for COVID-19 and going to the hospital early saves lives. Uh, we are not going to see uh, like the wave you've seen in the previous waves uh, with, with, with overcrowding in hospitals, people on the corridors waiting for oxygen, no. This time we do not expect it. And what we expect is, is people who are becoming severe should seek immediate attention with medical science because early oxygen therapies, early the medical treatments that we have now known for COVID-19 can be applied and be saved lives. So I think the situation is controllable uh, we need to be on high alert. We do have a subvariant that shows them escape mutations. It's highly transmissible. Reinfections are highly possible despite you having a vaccination or you're uh, previously having uh, exposed to uh, COVID-19. Um, but for people who are immunocompromised, old age, if you have symptoms of COVID-19, there's no harm in getting tested and there is no harm in reporting to your medical practitioner early. So at this stage, you know, I'm just thinking, Professor, if uh, someone uh, who perhaps uh, does have a compromised immune system or is vulnerable, uh, would you then suggest that they maybe, when going out, uh, don those masks again, as an example? You know, uh, what sort of precautions can they apply? First and foremost, uh, masks are generally very, very um, uh, helpful in every instance, not only just for COVID-19. If you are old and you're vulnerable and you find yourself in a crowded and a non-ventilated place, these are two big factors you need to always be cognizant of. Are the windows open? Is there a good ventilation in the room? Is there a, a good adequate distance? There's no overcrowding. Wear a mask. Uh, it will help you against not only COVID-19, but to against the flu virus. That's equally more lethal to people who are immunocompromised or people who are old. It will also help you against TB. It will help you against many other uh, uh, diseases that are airborne or spread through droplets from one human to the other. And that's a very fundamental rule that everybody must know, despite COVID or not COVID. And you must use it in this period when you know there is a new subvariant which is highly transmissible and is causing havoc in the global north. Well, in global north, the situation is slightly different than global south, which is our us because they have winters, they have very severe winters, which is keeping them indoors, long, less ventilation, overcrowding is less ventilation. So the virus is moving more quickly. But in South Africa, you need to be more cognizant when your surroundings are. My second advice is if you can and you are due for a booster dose for your vaccine, 
or if you have not vaccinated, please get vaccinated. You've clearly seen science um, has saved lives. The only way we could crack COVID-19 was through science. Um, a scientific world built a vaccination program like it dealt with smallpox in the, the past, like it's been dealing with polio, like it's been dealing with many other viruses and bacteria around the world that kills humans and children gets it. It has clearly shown how we could protect ourselves from COVID-19. So please uh, look around us. And if you've not get vaccinated, do get vaccinated. Uh, because this virus is there. It's going to freely move. It loves human body. And you need your immune system to be around you to protect yourself from this virus. So these will be my two key uh, requests uh, for people listening to me. And then, uh, Prof, we've seen a surge in cases um, of COVID-19 in China. And uh, this, of course, has caused concern for others across the world, uh, given that China still for the longest time um, was, you know, dealing with COVID very strictly. So given that um, this latest COVID-19 wave has now reared its head um, and uh, China has all but, uh, you know, waived some of those strict protocols that they had in place, you know, should we be concerned? Should South Africans be worried? given the fact that uh, we still allow travelers from other countries into South Africa? Uh, a very tricky question. Uh, one is uh, the situation in China uh, was inevitable because of the strict lockdowns and the population not being exposed like the South Africans were or the global people were uh, because we opened our markets much quicker. We opened our systems, our lockdowns much more quicker, which allowed people, unfortunately, to get uh, and what we call it as acquired immunity, which is getting infection of COVID-19. Um, as I said, 80% of South Africans got this infection, which means they developed something called uh, acquired immunity. And many were mild, many were uh, not even people knew about it, but the infection was there and it helped in building the immune system. That did not happen in China. Uh, China was so well protected and what severe lockdowns that did not allow the virus to infect many Chinese people in within China to develop what we call it required immunity. They also have a huge aging population, which China is extremely worried about, and that you have to be worried. It happened in Italy. We saw how in in European countries this virus was a havoc for people who did not have immune systems and caused how severely to the, to the elderly. And China is worried on that ground. And the third important factor is uh, that Chinese rates of vaccinations are far lower than the rates of vaccination we saw in the global north, in other countries, in Western world, in South Africa alone also. So comparatively, we've done uh, in that round uh, earlier than what China is doing it. So this was about to happen to a virus which is so quickly uh, spreading. The worry part of China remains only one issue, and that is availability of data and genomic sequencing data. Is there something that's moving in COVID-19 that we are not aware of? If it's Omicron variant or the variants that have caused havoc in South Africa, like the previous variants circulating, that is what we presume and that is what we're thinking is perfectly, uh, has to happen. It's something we've gone through and China is going through now, and we should not be panicking and we should not be worried about it. But if we can get more data from, from China, we can get understanding from China and we request WHO to, to work with the Chinese authorities to get more geno genomic understanding so that we know that the circulation of the current variants in, uh, in China are, are what the world has already experienced. And that gives a lot of um, uh, less severity on any concern for South, for, for South Africa or the global terms in general. So, and the latest part is the Chinese are traveling and a lot of genomic sequencing that's coming to other parts of the world is showing that the variants circulating are still the Omicron variant. And so there's no panic as such at this stage. Uh, however, the only alert is that more data from China will help the world to prepare itself from what's happening in the China at this moment. So at this stage, uh, the uh, new sub-variant there of Omicron, you're saying, Prof, no need to panic, but of course, for those who are immunocompromised, just be cautious and make sure that you take the necessary precautions as you head out. Is that summing it up correctly? 
Absolutely, Sakani. Sakina, you are perfectly right. <laughs> You're a good teacher. Prof, thank you so much for your time as always. Uh, that's the CEO of Higher Health SA and Global Health Expert, uh, Professor Ramnik Aluwalia, helping us to make sense of the latest developments regarding uh, COVID-19 and, of course, the recent detection of, uh, of what is said to be a highly transmissible variant named the Kraken. Uh, so, Professor saying, no need to panic at this point, but, of course, uh, uh, those who are immunocompromised, uh, make sure that you do wear your mask when you head out and it will protect not only against COVID-19, but of course the flu and uh, other diseases such as TB as well. So that's the word for now from the professor.